Welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we are going to put together this very cool Super Pie Raspberry Pi case. It has an eject button. It, the eject is actually used for micro SD cards. It's got a power switch right here on the front. It's also got a fan in here. It's got two USB ports on the side. It's also got USB ports on the side here, Ethernet access, it has HDMI, audio jack, power, micro SD card access, all right here in this small form factor, which is very cool. Not only that, it includes controllers. It's an awesome kit. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to be taking a look at this, which is the Super Pi. It just arrived a couple days ago. I've got a certain individual I have in mind that I'm going to be giving this to. This is the Super Pi case for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. So yeah, let's open it up and take a look. And it includes uh, two controllers. There's a fan. And it looks like some heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And a little card if you're happy or not from Geek Pi. Okay. So far, it looks pretty cool. It's got a uh, functional power and reset button, a functional LED power indicator, a safe shutdown, and safe reset. That's a cute box. Look at that. That's pretty neat. Uh, I don't want to really tear into that box. Let's see if I can. Yep, there we go. And that's what it looks like. That is neat. It's got two USB ports there. Looks like we got uh, HD, uh, yeah, HDMI, power, audio. Super Pi. Super Pi case. Well, that's neat. A couple of little USB extensions. Looks like it's got some little rubber feet for it. And a screwdriver. That's nice. We'll have to go hunting for one. That's always good. Here I have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Uh, this will work with the Raspberry Pi 2, a 3, 3B Plus, and yeah, here we go. Let's go ahead and install it. We'll go ahead and plug in the USB ports. And on this cable, you'll want to... Make sure the holes line up just right. And you want the red wire on the very far right. Gently push down on the GPIO pins. And bring it in at a slight angle. And get those ports in. Make sure the holes line up. We're going to put a screw here, here, and here. Let's go ahead and do that. You want to use these small black screws. There's three of them. Okay. 
Okay, now in this kit, it came with a little fan. So we'll go ahead and install the fan. Pretty simple. Once you get it all lined up, it just kind of pops in place. Now I don't see any need to put any screws in there. Uh, that's not going anywhere. So I'm not going to. And then over here, you want to make sure the red wire, you turn it around this way, you'll see a little plus sign over here. That's your positive, which is red. So we'll put that in there like so. Make sure it's on there real well. All right. Leave, make sure the power switch at the PCB and power switch button at the case both are off before assembling. So we'll leave that off. There is a switch over here for the safe shutdown. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Uh, I may be installing that script, so we'll take a look at that. That uh, looks good. I'll slightly bend those wires down a little bit so the case doesn't pinch it. Make sure everything's hooked up. Looks good. All right. I'll put the case on it. Or the top cover, I should say. All right. Now we'll use these four little screws and whoop. go in there, little fella. All right, now we'll just tighten them all down. I like to start on one side, get it in. And then go to the opposite side up here. Alright, we'll do this one. It's a very cool little case. It's very sturdy, plastic. Alright, so let's take a quick look at it. Let's make sure things are working. Our eject button works. Our power switch should work. Reset. Over on this side we have the two USB ports, the Ethernet port. On the back we have the power in, HDMI, your 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and of course the micro SD card, which go ahead and pop this one in here. Like that. And let's just uh ah. I'll go ahead and put the cover back on it. Very cool. All right, we'll plug the HDMI in. And make sure it's powered off, which it is. Now plug in the power supply. And okay, that's powered on here. This one actually has a switch, which is kind of handy, so you can power it on and off. And don't freak out, I have this turned off, so it shouldn't be turning it on. So, uh, now I'm going to turn it on. It has a front-facing LED. So we're going to go ahead and unwrap one of the controllers. And we will plug it in to the front. Like so. And we'll go ahead and set it up. Hold down the A button. And I'm going to go through the setup here. I'm pressing up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, 
X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. And I'm just going to hold down a button. It doesn't matter which button, just press any of them down. Just one of them, though. And go through the rest of these until you get to the hot key. When you get to the hot key, in my case, I'm going to hit the select key. There we go. So now I'm going to hit the select key. And yeah, press the A key. No, I'm going to press the B key. I'm going to press A key. A. There we go. All right. So now we have the image all pretty much ready. There's a few minor things I'm going to go ahead and set up in here. Let me go into the... Uh, I'll set up my Wi-Fi and uh, a few other things, but... Anyway, I've got two other videos that go into that in more detail, so if you want to watch those videos, if you subscribe to my channel, then you'll be able to go in there and take a look at the uh, video on the RetroPie Rampage install. It's, it's a pretty cool distribution. It's what you see here. And uh, then I also have another one on uh, using configuring MAME. Once you flip the switch on the small PCB on the top, to uh, handle the shutdown script, now you need to install some software on there. To do that, you'll want to go to github.com retroflag retroflag dash pi case, and it'll bring you to some instructions here. And basically, what you want to do is uh, connect up to the internet, which you do that through RetroPi. Go in there and just select Wi-Fi and set it to your particular Wi-Fi location and enter your password. Hopefully you have a password. And then uh, what you want to do is run this script here. Now what we're going to do is uh, I've already got my SuperPy connected and I'm going to use PuTTY. So it's a free application. Just go download it, PuTTY and uh, type in super pi in my case yours is going to most likely be retro pi so do that and go to the open button and now you have a login here and we're going to type in pi raspberry and once you're in there now you want to Go back over to that web page and copy this entire string just as it is and then right click go to copy so now it's on the clipboard type sudo right click press enter and it's going to go out to github and grab all that stuff. Now I've already got it installed. I tested it out a little bit before uh, recording this. So it's going to basically go out there and grab everything it already has. But in your case, uh, it'll just go through the install process. And when it's done, it will reboot your Raspberry Pi. And then when it comes back up, then the script will be installed. And right now, you can probably see this message here that uh, it, the, the server unexpectedly closed. That's because the Raspberry Pi is rebooting right now. I can see it on the screen. So anyway, that's how you set it up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I definitely think this little device is well worth the $40 they're asking for. It's a very sturdy case. It has a, a lot of nice features to it, especially the shutdown script. That's really neat. Uh, the eject button. That's that's a neat feature. Uh, but yeah, uh, for the price, you, you really can't beat it. It has two controllers. It has the Pi case. I'll put links in the description below for where to purchase it, as well as uh, where to get the power adapter or what power adapter I'm using, a USB keyboard, and uh, of course, where to get a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus if you don't have one already. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon.